welcome to our blog. It's Jacqueline DuPont, the gerontologist, and I'm here today to talk about the transition from either home or from another facility to memory care and how that can be very challenging and really what are some key points and um, what are some, of course, lists of items that we need to really review before you do choose a facility. Then after you have chosen one, how to prepare for that move and how to talk to your loved one about it, because that's the most difficult part, I think, with so much feedback I get from all of you. It seems like that, that transition part of it is very difficult, telling them, or maybe not telling them. Um, you know, like I'm gonna say over and over again, you know your loved one the best. So while you're in the process of choosing the best facility, um, you're looking at so many different issues. We've talked about this so many times, but choosing the best facility is about, was there, were there any odors on the tour? Was everyone happy? Did people genuinely smile? Did they look like they liked their work? Did they introduce themselves? Um, did you find the food to be appetizing? Did you think that they really understood memory care and food and the dining process? Did you think that there were a lot of activities going on? And were there different levels of activities? Were there levels for mildly impaired, older adults, moderate, and later stage? Because everyone is at a different stage in the disease and needs different care. Um, did they have a physician on staff? If they did, does he just show up once a month? Or is he or she coming once a week? Do they have a psychiatrist they can talk to or come out and see your loved one? Is a psychiatrist needed? Um, do they take HMOs? So many of you do have an HMO and it's difficult on some facilities to actually service an older adult with an HMO. Um, and if they have an HMO, how do they get home health? Is home health brought to them? Uh, do they have a lab that comes out, a chest x-ray that comes out? Do they take hospice? And if they do take hospice, how's the coordination with the hospice agency that you may be looking at or that your loved one's already on? How's that coordination? Would they work with that hospice? Um, do they work with their social workers? The social workers are critical. So um, if your loved one is on hospice in any, any part of the aging process, say they're living at home, living in another facility, and you wanna move them, it's really critical to talk to that team. Hospice is in charge of their care. So please talk to the social worker, the case manager, the nurse, and get everyone on board um, to understand why you are moving. And they can also help prepare you and prepare your loved one. So after you've chosen the best facility, you've asked questions to maybe the executive director, how long have you been there? How long has your team been there? So the upper management team, the activity director, maintenance director, um, let's say uh, director of memory care or charge nurse or whatever they call their title, wellness, whatever it is, those people have to have had some longevity in the organization. Make sure of that. And if they are brand new, maybe they moved from Nevada to California, but they had really nice experience and have been working in our field for a long time. That's always fine. But if everyone's new, it's a little bit of a red flag. So make sure there's some longevity. And, and then you discuss with your family, um, make your decision, and you've made the decision that you want to move your loved one. There are some preparations prior to move in. So in memory care, you may have a memory box or a door. Either highlight that door or area into the room so your loved one's going to know where that room is. So either decorate the memory box, um, add a sign on the door, you can laminate it, um, ask the facility what they prefer, but find a marker, put flowers in front of the door, do something so there's a trigger and an awareness of where the room is. That's critical. Make sure you label everything. Uh, that's critical of everything, hearing aids, everything. Um, a clear inventory is critical. And when I say it's critical, I mean, if a facility says, oh, we don't do inventory, that is a red flag. We do inventory because we need to know what's here, what's coming. And if you leave, do an exit inventory. Now, a lot of times um, you may have valuables, rings, whatever, no real jewelry. Please no valuables. It's not 
that anyone would steal them. It's that they could be misplaced by your loved one or another resident who comes into the room accidentally, which can happen in memory care, and takes it for no ill reason. So we just really want to make sure valuables stay at home. If they have a very favorite ring, you know, try to get a fake one that looks exactly the same. That's really critical. But to be all transparent, filling out the inventory sheets critical. Again, so um, when you're going to uh, know you picked the room, you selected it, and you, you know the specifics, the rules and regulations of that community, because everyone has different policies. So just confirming with their admission agreement or community agreement, what is the agreement? What, what are their rules? When are their visiting hours? Um, how do they allow pets? I know all these things are done during discovery and by this time you've chosen the facility, but sometimes you may have forgotten something like, are you supposed to bring the sheets or do they provide them? That's just one little tiny thing. Or um, another item is, do they provide hand soap? I mean, you don't sometimes think about it, but you think, well, they probably give you the paper towels and the hand soap, but they may not. So all of that should be clarified up front and now you've, you've chosen this wonderful place and you need to somehow let your loved one know the transition is going to be made. The first thing not to do is to say, mom, you are sick and you need more help. That's coming from a negative point of view and saying that may depress her. So um, when you know you've tried every single, single approach, nothing, nothing's working, you could talk to the doctor and you could blame it on the doctor. I've seen that work effectively and I've seen that not work effectively because they'll say, I want to fire that doctor. But using the doctor route has helped. But again, the doctor may say, this is only to improve your memory. We want to really work on it. We want to get you into activities. It's not a lie. It's a little bit of a therapeutic fib, but we want hope. We want them to feel some hope like wow maybe i will get better eating in a group setting dining um hydrating and meeting lots of new people and friends maybe that will help me so come from a positive viewpoint try not to go to the right away um you need more help you need 24-hour care you can't live alone all those negative things just say try first you know let's really try to go to a place where we might be able to work on things to get you better and healthier. And if you improve, of course you're gonna come home. And that is the truth. If your loved one is going to improve, which some do, a very small percentage, but some do, and they do go home because they are getting great hydration, probably excellent physician visits, and all these things are getting into a routine for that person with memory loss and they may improve. Now, if they go home, they may decline again because there's no structure unless you're setting up the same program. So anyway, these are all tips. The most important tip I can tell you is just try to be positive. Number two, try your very, very best not to order them around. Um, know your loved one. If you know they're gonna come visit and they're gonna freak out and they're just gonna go, oh my gosh, this is too much, I don't know where I am, and just get more and more anxious, then don't bring them ahead of time. But if you know your loved one and they're just forgetful and um, a little bit agitated here and there, bring them at their good time of the day and show them the facility. And they may look around and go, wow, this is kind of nice. Or there's some nice people here and I'd like to meet them. You never know. So you can try a visit ahead of time or you can decline it. It's really, there's no way around it. Some experts say it's the best thing to do and some say it's the worst thing to do. What I say is you know your loved one and you know how you've been around them enough to know. Um, if you haven't been around them enough and they live in another state, I would say a pre-visit isn't necessary. Try the day of and then show them around really well. Have the room prepared. Have all the items we talked about and that should um, make for a smoother transition. If your loved one is totally not going to agree to this and you know this is difficult, they are a hazard to themselves, they are not getting the hydration and food and care they deserve at home or in an environment, you may want to then have to call the doctor, have to get other support around you 
to make this work. You may need a social worker to help out. Um, you may need to talk to their physician and take them to the doctors ahead of time and say to the physician, how can I make this as smooth as possible? And he may have some ideas, but reaching out and getting help is really the key. So don't be afraid. Everyone's going through this together. We've all been through this with our loved ones and asking for help is really necessary if they are really, really reluctant to move. So thank you for tuning in today. And if you have any questions, feel free to always email me. Thank you.